On this episode, Christian shows some dangerous graphs. Do you think I'm playing around here? I'm calling an advanced shmup tutorial. We have a brief moment of clarity. It's like we're investing so much effort to just create six seconds of gameplay. It's like what? But then we finally get going. Okay, this is exciting. <laughs> Hmm. Hi everybody, I'm Christian, this is LazyDevs Academy. This is the advanced shmup tutorial phase two, yeah! And today we are, this is episode number four, we are trying to figure out a lot of questions that we don't know. We're doing prototypes. Last episode, we just went, we just established a basic scrolling system. And it's cool. It's cool. Uh, I did some experiments, I think. Yeah, I did some experiments with the speed. We had a speed 0.5, that's the speed that we have. It looked like this. At this speed, it, we have only a one minute of gameplay <laughs> and then we're out of space. Ooh! <laughs> that's not a lot of gameplay. So one of the questions I asked you last time around is, what is a good length? What is a good goal to strive towards? And what are some ideas how we can achieve the, this this length. Well, I did some research myself. Behold, yes, <laughs> this is my amazing sprite sheet. Can I can I zoom in? No, I, I want to zoom in. Yes, there we go. This is my sprite sheet, where I reviewed a whole bunch of schmaps and to see you know how long it takes. I think I what I did there is I actually went went through YouTube videos and just like wrote down the time codes and did a lot of math. I did, did LSGG3. I did Dodon Pachi, all different levels in Dodon Pachi, Crimson Clover, uh, Esperade, uh, Blue Revolver, uh, Raiden, Ikaruga, Soldier Blade for some reason, <laughs> Danmark Festival 2, R-Type, and Barrage Fantasia. I played, at least I watched the playthroughs of all of those shmups and kind of tried to determine what is a good length for a shmup level. And boy, did I learn a lot. First of all, broadly speaking, I did like a sum. Broadly speaking, half an hour is basically the length of a typical shmup. Sometimes it's more, LSGG3 is a little bit longer. Sometimes it's shorter, but you know, broadly, you know, sometimes R type is just. 17? I just can't believe it. It's, it's really short. Yeah, but broadly speaking, no, we are talking about a bit of a around half an hour kind of experience. We definitely not going to achieve that with our little Pico H map. It's not going to be a half an hour kind of experience. Um, but looking at the individual levels, you know, we have anything ranging from two minutes to, you know, nine minutes here in Crimson Clover, final level, eight minutes. Yeah, these are like, I color coded them depending on the length. Denmark Festival stage six is 11 minutes. Uh, something to keep in mind is like the final levels usually are longer because there's long boss fights included. There's usually like three bosses in the final stage, like a mid boss, a final boss and a true final boss. So these bosses kind of like lengthen uh, the experience overall. Uh, and I wrote this down, I wrote these notes down here, especially Crimson Clover stage five. This has like a boss rush thing where there's multiple mid bosses, like all the bosses from the previous levels make an appearance. So there's like a whole bunch of boss fights at the end there. Um, maybe not really indicative, nine minutes is a bit, a bit, uh, a bit rich. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, anywhere in between two minutes till nine minutes, roughly speaking, is, is, is something that you see. Generally first levels, early levels are really, really short around two minutes uh, it's kind of like this kind of like you you want to give players like this early idea of you know here's a success here's you're getting to the final boss and beating it on your first coin you know yeah let later stages get longer and longer as you progress because you know you want to give players this juicy this juicy um challenge so looking at this, like the actual numbers don't really give you an idea of like what is a meaty level. So you kind of also have to play those games. So that's why I said research is important because you can't really answer those questions if you don't do research. And that's why you get stuck and you don't know what to do because you don't have answers. And research delivers you the answers. But you maybe sometimes have to approach the research with this idea that 
I want to find out something. So in this case, I want to kind of find a good level that felt to me like a meaty level that felt like I did something in that level. And to me, the le that level that we're talking about is this here, LSGG3 stage six. That was a pretty cool meaty level that I got stuck on also a lot, but also like it felt like a whole encapsulated experience as well. That's also a level. And also I did a playthrough video of GGLS3 and I commented a playthrough video and I actually talk a little bit about stage six because I think that's a really nice stage that feels meaty, it feels substantial. There's lots happening. You see a lot of different environments. There's like uh, three bosses there, like one early mid boss, late mid boss ish kind of thing, and then like a whole different boss as well. So there's two minutes of it, two minutes of it is just bosses. But yeah, overall, like a six minute experience felt like a meaty, meaty level. That's a far cry from the one minute that we have right now. But you know, even like the two minutes is still a far cry from what we have right now. So like, yeah, we're, we're not nearly where we're supposed to be. I did some more investigation. This is, do you, do you think I'm playing around here? I'm calling an advanced shmup tutorial for a reason. We are doing proper game design, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not messing around here. I did like this little breakdown. I used um, processing to do this, this visualization, just like to give us an idea how, what happens throughout those, those, well, actually it's seven minutes here. Uh, I guess, uh, I think in my initial assessment, I, maybe I didn't count the actual final boss <laughs> encounter. This is like a six, uh, one minute uh, boss encounter at the end. I think I didn't count that, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, this is kind of like the level I was talking about, the, this upper level. And I separated it into different segments, different chunks to see you know, how long you end up doing something throughout this level. I kind of like, there's distinct stages there that you can, I think, identify. You can see the orange parts, these are mid-boss fights. The red parts are boss fights. You can see that the mid-boss fight is kind of like, a, you know, 30 seconds to 40 seconds kind of experience. A boss fight is around a minute. And you can see, I just wanna make sure, I, I actually looked at some, uh, some other shmups as well, always stage one. And yeah, right in stage one is like a three minute kind of experience, 50 seconds of that is the boss fight. Crimson Clover, has a shorter boss fight at the end, but you know, that's the boss fight on stage one is nothing to write home about, so I don't know. Yeah, so this is like, I don't even know what kind of game, what kind of level we're gonna make. Maybe things will change along the way, but for now, I think just as a general guidance, I think something like LSGG stage six, from my research, from my experiences, is something I would love to create in Pico 8, and I think we can pull it off, but we're definitely not there yet. Something also to keep in mind is that, you know, as I said, two minutes of that is the boss fight. So maybe we don't need actually six minutes, maybe it's enough to have like four minutes, um, something around that. So let's see what we can do about this, how we can make this real. All right, back in our uh, scrolling prototype, I'm, I want to round, write down, I write down around 60 seconds is how we get with a speed of 0 0.2. I'm gonna write a goal here, uh, uh, six minutes. I'm gonna write it actually out in seconds. 360, 360 seconds is what we're, what we're looking for. And it's fine if we can manage only four minutes. Four minutes, four minutes kind of like the minimum, I would say maybe. If, if we can create like some kind of system that generates us four minutes, then we can maybe use the rest. You know, we can maybe use some kind of boss fight shenanigans to lengthen it to six minutes. So that would be 240 seconds. I know it sounds ridiculous. Like we're investing so much effort to just create six seconds of gameplay. <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> like that's not even a one day in Stardew Valley. <laughs> that's not even half a day in Stardew Valley. Yeah, I know it's it's weird, but that that's kind of shmups. They're very like this very condensed, very dense experience, very intense. And yeah, like if you sum it up, it's it's going to be just like this very short experience. But obviously, the idea is that players are not going to just play the game for six minutes and that's it. <laughs> they will play it for a longer time, trying to get through those six minutes because they will encounter a lot of challenges along the way. And it won't feel like six minutes, it will feel like a proper experience if you sum up the total engagement with the game. But yeah, it's weird. We're trying to 
Cake again that is just six minutes long. By the way, this is actually not too dissimilar from Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bomb was in total a four minute kind of experience, including the uh, the boss fight. So we're going for something that's slightly longer, but obviously a much richer experience overall. There was also a lot of downtime in a Cherry Bomb with like level transitions and so forth. So yeah, this is gonna be it's gonna be a slightly fuller experience, but still kind of difficult to fill in that space with the with the available with available map space. Our map space is really limiting us here right now. So what can we do to achieve this goal? What can, how can we stretch the one minute that we have into six minutes? Well, one obvious thing to do is just to make the screen go slower, right? How sl slow can we get? Um, we would have to divide the scrolling speed by six to get to six minutes, because right now we are almost exactly at one minute. So it divided by six. We're gonna get 0 0.08, something like 0 0.08. That is the scrolling speed that would get us six minutes. Let's try that. Ooh, <laughs> that is very slow. That is incredibly slow. That is that doesn't feel like like okay, sure, if this was like the prototype where you know we were on the orbit of the moon and the moon surfer was scrolling behind, that would be maybe acceptable, but this feels super sluggish. I, I, no, that that's probably won't do. And it's kind of fun to experiment with different values here and see what's what. I think 0 0.3 is kind of nice. That feels that feels good. Um, the problem is like when the speed gets really slow because the pixels are so large in Pico 8, it starts looking as if you know the uh, the frame rate is low, as if it's stuttering, because the jumps are you can see individual jumps of the pixels. Uh, and I think at 0 0.3 is kind of like when it breaks down. If you make it 0 0.1, yeah, then you can see like the individual jumps and it feels like very, it loses the fluidity of it. Now we have to, that fluidity might come back if we add some other animations we're gonna talk about in a second. But yeah, this is this is not cool. So let us set, let us settle somewhere around the lower edge of that. Let us set it around, you know, 0 0.2. That's still okay, I think. 0 0.2 is still like, it's at the lower possible limit, but it's kind of okay. You. You also don't want to background to scroll too fast because otherwise when there's ground targets, they will be gone before you can react to them. So yeah, okay, sure. Maybe 0 0.2 is something that, that, that kind of feels nice. I tried a lot of speeds and in the end, I will always return to something around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 as the scrolling speed. Well, at 0 0.2, if we tweak around with the speed at 0 0.2, uh, we arrive at 160 seconds. That's still not enough. <laughs> That's still not enough. Even if we say like, okay, maybe the boss fights will take two minutes, maybe 120 seconds for the boss fights. Then maybe we're gonna get there, but then it's like, I don't know, the four minutes doesn't feel like if half of the time is just boss fights, right? Yikes, yeah. So we need still some other techniques to stretch it out a little bit more. And that is one of the reasons why I suggested in the first place that we have like this kind of map segment system where we have multiple segments here that we can define here. Because what we can do here is we can start repeating some of the segments. Like if, what if there is a one segment that we just use twice, then we just, just gain a couple of seconds additional time, right? If we can repeat each of the second uh, of those columns of those segments, if you can repeat each one of them uh, twice, we just have twice the, the length and then it's gonna be fine. Then we just gonna, you know, that, that number here, 160 seconds will get just get doubled. So that's like around 320 seconds. And that's in the ballpark of what we're looking at. However, those are pretty big segments. So if parts of the levels are repeating, people will notice that people will be like, wait a minute, I just I just saw this before. Like, why is this like am I am I Am I, did I time travel or something? Like what, why, am I, did I jump back in a level? Like this would be, I don't think that this, we can, we can get away with just repeating two whole screens, you know? Um, so maybe we may need to make the segments smaller. So that's what was, what I was I thinking. Maybe we make the segments, individual segments smaller, then turn them into kind of like modules, and then we can, we can build our level out of modules. And we wanna make sure that roughly in general, we are repeating each module twice. So, okay, so let's try to make that work. Uh, let us just expand this segment idea. Do we have to, 
Just let's, let's just assume each segment has the same size. I think this will this will make our life a lot easier. So this means that our individual segments are no longer 256 uh, in in uh, in height. Now there should be just half of the screen, so that should be um, eight eight tiles in size. Uh, so that is going to be uh, 64 pixels. So yeah, we're going to write down here, we're going to write down 64. And then here, the width of each segment, each module is going to be 16 pixels, again, width of the entire screen. But maybe that will change. And then the height of each module is, well, it's going to, it would be 16 if it was a whole screen. But again, we're going down to eight, half a screen for each module. And this is just something I did just messing around with this, just playing around, trying different approaches. I did four of those prototypes, okay? <laughs> I'm just gonna jump straight to the solution that I arrived at. I think half a screen of a segment feels good. It feels modular. So you, even if you repeat segments, there's always may, maybe gonna be a new segment on the screen, or um, there's gonna be a, a unique combination of segments on the screen that you haven't seen before maybe. Okay, so we now have like these very short modules, which also means that like this whole map segment system is going to be a bit changed. So let us let us draw out the segments to just like see if they even work. Okay, so we have this segment. So let's see uh, how are we going to do this. Oh my gosh, this is this is actually this is difficult to pull off. So this is the coordinate 15 that is the bottom of the this here so here at the co coordinate that that is going to be the edge is it going to be it no 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 wait 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 it's kind of hard to see let us make this tile a bit more more uh clearly visible let us make it something like this because i really want to see it in a zoomed out view so we clearly see when there is when one segment ends and the other begins. Still don't see it. Oh my gosh. Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? Can we make like a big line here? So we can see. Yeah, now we see those lines. Oh, perfect. See? And now we can draw in the lines where they belong. I see this probably belongs here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like this. So this, so this is gonna be a module from from this thick line down to this line here. This is gonna be one module. And we're gonna create those modules later on. That's gonna be our level design, basically. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna figure out how to make those, how to assemble those modules into, into uh, levels. Something like this. No, I think it's here is the correct coordinate. 24, yeah, that seems fine. 16, 24, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so I just want to assemble the first couple of modules. I'm gonna, I'm gonna number them. One, two, three, new numbering system for above here. So each module gets a number here. And yeah, let's just, let's just create four modules. Let's just like remove those map segments. We don't need that anymore. We are in a whole different world where those modules are now, those segments are now smaller. So the first segments, uh, that's actually wrong. What is going to be the first segment? Segment number one is the one that I want to have here. This is the first segment. And that is going to be starting at uh, 24. So the first segment is going to start at 24. The second segment is going to start here. That is going to be 16. Uh, 16. And the x uh, coordinate is zero because we are working in the same column. Very important. 24, 16, the next one is going to be 8, and the final one is going to be 0. Okay, and that should be it. That should be it. Let's see how that works. It does not work at all. Why? Ah, there we go. It does work. It does work. Um, I think the initial scroll was set too high. So uh, yeah, that's what works. Uh, let me so do something else here. I'm printing the time. I also want to print the scroll. So 11, and then I'm gonna type in scroll. Yeah, there we go. That's the scroll right there. Okay, yeah, the initial scroll um, expects that we are two screens. We're starting two screens in. 
or like the individual segments are two screens in, in size, but actually in reading, let's just, we start at zero, then actually we, we have to go actually positive now. So we have to go at 64 at the initial scroll. We already have to be scrolled in a little bit. That's, that's where the level begins because we want to start with some segments on the screen. Sweet. All right, so now we have a bunch of modules already prepared. Now all that's left to do is to kind of like fill the entire map with those modules. Um, just to like see, you know, what this will look like. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go into this matrix mode where we just use the stamp tool. Uh, there we go. And I'm just going to stamp out all the modules in the different columns. Okay. down here in this tile, because I want to label all of the columns, obviously, uh, all of the modules correctly, so, so I don't get them confused by each other. So I'm gonna just add the remaining two characters so I can write out whole numbers, entire numbers, baby. Okay, so this is module number four. Now I'm just gonna, let me go through this process, you know, quickly and just like, you know, put the right numbers on the different modules. All right, so we have now 33 modules here, and you know, they're evenly spaced, and it's always the same modules with a different number on it. Um, so yeah, now it's all about creating the segments here, and it's like, at this point, it's like, wow, that's a lot of segments that we have to just create. Can we just do some smart math to do the, to make the computer create the segments for us? It's just always the same numbers, right? The segments are all the same size. So it should be something we can just do using code. And yeah, let's do that. So we're gonna do for i equals one to 32 do end. And, okay. And then we're gonna add to the map segments a thing. Okay, that's good. Now we're gonna have to figure out the column, the top left corner of the top left corner of each segment. We're gonna find out the, the, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So basically the column and the row, right? Um, the column is like, it starts at zero, but every, yeah, every four segments, uh, it counts up by 16, right? So it's, um, after we include its four segments, we jump by 16 to the next column, right? So we can do something like i minus one modulo, new keyboard. Ah, there we go, there we go, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Everything is good, everything is good. <laughs> okay, modulo four. Uh, and then we'll multiply this by 16. Ooh, that's <laughs> scary code. <laughs> Um, oh, actually, modulo is wrong here. I think we need to divide by four. Uh, we need to divide and floor. Let's just let's do it like this. Floor by four, and then multiply by sixty. So we can we can maybe break it down a little bit. We gotta go call local. Oh, and actually, we can't put code in here. We have to put it in here. Local column and local row. Right. We're just gonna divide like this. And it's like the column is gonna be, okay, it's gonna be I, and it's gonna be one, two, three, four, and then when it gets to five, we want the column to jump to the next column, right? So we're gonna go I minus one. So now it's gonna go zero, one, two, three, and then at four, we're gonna go jump to the next column. Then we're gonna divide by four and floor it. And here is, I'm gonna do like a little debug, kind of like a simulation of what, what, what we were gonna get. So if we're gonna go, go one, first, first is the I, we're gonna do like a whole table. We're gonna, we're gonna do it like, look how luxurious I am. So I minus one is gonna be zero, one, two, three, four. And then divided by four and floor, so cutting off floor means cutting off the stuff behind the comma. 
So we're going to get something like 0, 0, 0. 3 divided by 4 is 0 point something, so 0. But 4 divided by 4 is 1. So for the first four entries, we're going to get 0, and then we're going to get 1, 1, 1, 1, and then we're going to 2, 2, 2, and so forth. And then the next step of this, this math, I'm just breaking it all down, guys. This is, this is what a tutorial is all about, right? Um, and then we're going to multiply by 16. So we're going to go, again, 0 times 16 is still 0. 0, 0, 0, but then we're going to get 16. And then we're going to get later on, we're going to 32 and so forth, OK? So this is the code I'm working with here. That's what, what I'm thinking. I think this is correct. I hope this is correct. <laughs> so we're going to plug this into MX. I'm just going to get the code. OK? Now the row is a bit difficult. I mean, we could make our life a little bit easier and start numbering them from top to bottom. Bottom, like so this is going to be the first module like right now this is module not like the top left corner that's module number four but it would be easier if this was just one <laughs> and then the next one would be two it's just slightly easier for us for the math <laughs> because then that means that we can say i minus one uh, module of four multiplied by eight. So again, we do like a little breakdown just so, just so we understand. Now modulo four, that is kind of like dividing and uh, returning the reminder, remainder, reminder. <laughs> so zero divided by four is zero reminder zero. One divided by four is zero the reminder one. 2 divided by 4 is 0, reminder 2, 3. And then we are, when we arrive at 4, that's going to be, again, uh, 1. And the reminder is going to be 0. And then here we multiply. The, the last thing we're going to do is multiply by 8. 8. And again, it's going to be uh, 0 divided by 8 is 0. 1 divided by 8 is 8. 2 divided by 8 is 16. 3 divided by 8 is 24. And then we're back down to 0. So it's going to be 0 again. OK. Sorry. I, I, it's, it, it's the advanced tutorial, guys. We, this time I'm not going to shy away from the math. It's not even that difficult. Come on. So that's, that's, that's what, I, what, I, what, I, what I came up with. So this should fill our, our map with segments. Let's see if that works. We saw two twos. One. Numbering is all wrong now. Uh, seven. <laughs> okay, this is exciting. <laughs> Six, okay. Okay, let us make sure that the numbering is now following our system. So one, two, three, Four. So let's see if the first, so two, three, wait, where's one? Where did one go? I'm, I'm worried, I'm worried. Wait, is the scroll false? Is that, is, we, did, we, did we mess up the scroll? I think the scroll is false. Let's just see. No, it's not. Did we miss something up? Ah, this might be a, maybe the modulo is going first. Like it's a order operations kind of problem, no? Dang. Uh, definitely something that, uh, a problem with the row thing. So let's do the, ah, I see, I divided by one. I should do, go minus one. <laughs> oh, somebody was screaming at the screen. Like, ah! There we go. Now we have one, two. And now, then we're going to get eight. But the, again, the numbering on the map is not quite right. So let me fix that real quick. There we go. 32 modules. Let's run this one, two. Let's just make the speed faster, just like so we can see more of what's happening. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
Let me, yeah, it seems, seems to be working fine. Okay, but let's just remove this, this helper text here. That's good, that's good, that's working, but it's like, again, the idea was that we can repeat segments and that's not something that we're doing right now. We're just like creating segments and just drawing them right, right onto the screen. That's not actually what we're going for. So yeah, this could be a bit, we have to redo the system so we can now repeat it. And we're gonna split this a little bit. So I think a good idea is to kind of have like a segment library that you pull from. And then the level is just gonna be like the actual level that you're gonna build. It's just gonna be a sequence of numbers referencing the different segments from the library. It's kind of like the same thing that we have here in the sprite system. We have different sprites and each sprite has a number. And so when you draw like a, like a map, it's just like a whole bunch of numbers, right? Uh, and those numbers are referencing the individual sprites. So first we're gonna draw this sprite, then we're gonna do this sprite and this sprite, you know, just like a sequence of numbers. So instead of the map SEGS, I'm gonna call it a SEGLIB, the segment library. I'm gonna establish segment library. And actually we probably don't even need that library, but that's, yeah, that's good. optimization comes later. And then we're gonna go, um, uh, yeah. Seg sequence, seg sequence, seg, seek, seg, seg. Yeah, let's call it map segs. Uh, and then we can do now like a sequence of segments. Let's go two, 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 uh, two, two, one, eight. It's going to be like a really short map of four segments. Um, and now the way we're drawing this thing is we're going to loop through the map segments. And then when we are um, getting a segment to work with. We're not getting the segment from map segs. Instead, what we're doing, we're getting the segment from seglib. And it's not gonna be i anymore. It's gonna be map segs i. Like this. A bit of a second step there happening here, right? So we're gonna get those numbers from the map segs sequence, just the numbers. I'm gonna plug those numbers into our library. I'm gonna pull a segment from our library and we're gonna draw that onto the screen. Let's see if that works. Two, two, one, eight. Two, two, one, eight. Okay? And yeah, it goes all the way to 32. Now 32, two, one, eight. Now we can create a chain of numbers and that's how we're gonna design our level. <gasps> That's nice, isn't it? Also something I also wanted to mention is, have you noticed? I talked about this last episode, but you, you see how, okay, we are at 50, 25%, at 25%, look at the performance. We are at 25% uh, CPU costs. If I copy this a bunch of times, now we have a whole bunch of segments, right? We are drawing a whole bunch of segments. Like this loop loops a whole bunch of times. There's a whole bunch of map states in this segment that we're doing a lot more. But it's just barely more a resource drain. All of the map segments that we're drawing off screen are just ignored. They just don't matter that much in the long term. Uh, really all that matters are the segments that are actually visible on the screen. So we, we can get away with just like dumping all of the segments in a huge list of, 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 um, of segments and just drawing them all on the screen and not caring about when a segment has to disappear and so that we are <laughs> preserving resources. We kind of can be a bit more careless about uh, how many segments we are drawing on the screen. And so this is time to get to the dog is on. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, yes, everybody, the dog is on. Okay. <clears throat> so this time in the dog is on goal is we are kind of like finished so far with this, um, with this prototype. We are kind of finished here. We answered the question, how long is the level? We kind of like have a goal for a level and we have kind of figured out the speed that is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 around this kind of speed seems good. We have a system that allows us to create a long level. We haven't built the tile set. We haven't built the levels. That's something that we come back to later. But for now, I want to move on to the next prototype. And the next prototype <clears throat> is gonna be the moving and shooting stuff prototype. And before we get there, there is a difficulty, there is a challenge that I, I'm not gonna show you the problem here, but I want you to try something. I want you to draw a ship, a sprite on the screen, like in the basic um, 
uh, prototype. I want you to make it so that it moves diagonally. When you press two buttons, left, uh, up and, and left, it goes diagonally. And I want you to move it at the speed of 0 0.3. 0 0.3 at 60 frames per second. And I want you to just see what happens. And I want you to try to understand what happens. Like, like it's going to be looking maybe funky. And I want you to try to fix the funkiness. Compare 0 0.3 to speed 1, see how the difference. And the, the next quest is going to be making 0 0.3 look as if it was speed 1, like looking as smooth as 1 looks compared to the wonkiness of 0 0.3. That is the challenge for next time, <laughs> for now. As always, I said at the end of these episodes, uh, this show is supported by Coffee Supporters on Coffee, and you can also become a supporter on coffee.com and you can support me. And as a thank you, you will get early access to new episodes as they come around. So you don't have to wait for you know, next week or you know, how long it takes to, for those episodes to get released, but you can get them today, now. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazydevs. Yes, yes, yes. So actually, you know, compared to how, what I went through designing this, this scrolling system, this was smooth sailing, it's fine. There's gonna be some more complications later on. We're gonna come back to the, uh, to the map system because of the tile set and other questions. But yeah, so far, this looks nice, this looks good. Next episode, we are gonna start finally having a spaceship on the screen, move it around. See you next time around, guys, bye-bye.